So the Calgary Homeless Foundation is the lead implementer of what's known as Calgary's 10-year plan to end homelessness. The plan was debuted in 2008 uh, and it ends on January 29th, 2018. The vision of the plan is that by 2018, uh, the average experience of someone in an emergency shelter will be that they have to be there for no longer than one week before um, being able to access appropriate, safe and stable housing. Um, so the plan is an effort to create sort of a strategic framework around all the different agencies that are doing work in the community. So we know that um, there are any number right, of, of contributing agencies that are serving homeless people on a day-to-day -day basis. However, the goal at the foundation is to create a system of care where when somebody enters the system, similar to a healthcare system, right, where, you know, there's an emergency room, but there's also preventative care, there's also, you know, post-operative care, all those different kinds of things. And so uh, CHF largely serves as a kind of coordinating mechanism to look at, look at data at a systems level, look at funding at a systems level, um, roll out research and best practice, um, and kind of think at the 10,000 feet level. So when we talk about, we typically talk about environmental trends uh, writ large. So that includes things like in migration, the job market, minimum wage, um, you know, and kind of any, any number of sort of social and economic factors that impact people's experience of homelessness or impact poverty uh, on, a, on a more large uh, basis. So when we look at housing, right, we rely on data coming out of, again, um, the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Company and other sort of national looks at the cost of housing, vacancy rates, how many new units are coming on stream, those types of measurements. Um, and like you said, we see in the news constantly that there's a real lack of just room in the market period, much less room in the market if you're somebody who maybe doesn't have good credit or somebody who has kids or um, who has other challenges to maintaining their housing. Um, and so I would say that that part of the story of, of leveling out those figures are, is that, um, you know, in the face of helping those 6,000 individuals, we're also, it's like walking, um, it's like walking up a down escalator. And so I would say it's challenging to understand how fast the down escalator is moving and, and how fast we're walking up. Like, is it, you know, 90% is the housing market and 10% is the in-migration or is it the opposite? Um, that level of, of analysis we haven't yet um, been, able to, uh, been able to achieve. Um, but we do know basically that they're, they're sort of countering, countering forces. So I would say the biggest challenge that um, members of our community face when the winter arrives is simply the ability to secure safe shelter on a night-to-night -night basis. So for people who are, who are currently staying in shelter, um, they right, have a place to stay with some consistency, but as shelters get more and more full, we do things like put mats on floors, right, to ensure that people who may typically like to sleep outside for any number of rules, right, or any number of reasons, they don't enjoy the rules, they don't want to see maybe their old dealer stays at, right, and, you know, abusive partner could stay at the shelter, those types of things. When those people come inside, we are doing our best to ensure that when anybody comes inside and it's that cold, that there's a place for them to stay. I would say, though, that as shelters get more and more crowded, the um, social and physical experience of the shelters becomes more challenging, right? There's, it's like when people's tempers get short when there's bad traffic. So when you go into a shelter and it's already full, everybody's gear is soaked, everybody's freezing, right? Um, it becomes a harder place to stay, frankly. And I think that shelters, by and large, do a great job of trying to create as appropriate an environment as they can, but naturally you face pressures. Same thing as going to an emergency room when it's really busy. You're like, all I want is to see a doctor. And I think members of our community arrive at shelter saying, all I want is a, you know, a safe and warm place to sleep. I would say um, 
that it's it's any number of things. I would say top of the list for me would be um, if you're replacing your winter gear, donate your old stuff, but not necessarily to a thrift store. Take the extra 10 minutes and drop it off at a shelter. Almost any shelter will accept those types of donations during business hours. Um, when you are moving through public spaces, be gracious and generous with people, right? Recognize that if somebody is taking up a table at a coffee shop, maybe with their extra backpack or their bag of um, recyclables, that they're doing so because they don't have a space where they can just sit and have coffee like we do. And so an extra measure of, of grace and of um, inclusion and willingness to just say, yep, we share the same space and your right to sit there is just the same as mine. Um, and so really dialing back the judgment, right? And just being, um, yeah, just being more kind than usual. I would say another experience of, of a lot of homeless people is to um, just feel like they are, are ignored or, or marginalized. So for instance, People have you know, a wide number of approaches to panhandlers, but for me on a personal level, I think the most important thing you can do is make co eye contact with people and say, hi, how's it going? Some situations where mental health predates the experience of homelessness, and there are some situations where it postdates the experience, right? Where once you're on the streets, if you experience an assault because you're not safe, because you have to live your life outside, you can develop a mental health issue from that, right? And so this framework of risk trigger trap, I think, is a more meaningful way to say um, there are a, a really wide range of, of reasons people end up in homelessness, but that common trajectory from a set of risk factors to a triggering event to a set of um, socio and economic kind of systemic barriers that keep you in shelter are often what results in sort of some of those longer term experiences of homelessness. I am inclined to, to tell people first and foremost to make eye contact, right? And to just acknowledge, yes, you're also a human and we're both out here together. And then to use, um, to use some spidey sense, um, right? So there are absolutely situations where, um, where not stopping is, the, is in some cases the safest choice, right? There are other situations where you see somebody who looks like they're about to cry and sitting down next to them and asking them their story might be a really valuable exercise. Um, I know other people who do things like they carry bus tickets or they carry Tim Hortons cards, right? If they don't want to give cash. Um, however, I also know that there are people who would advocate giving cash for reasons like, I am the best person who knows what I need. And so if I get a bus ticket, maybe I don't need to take the bus. But if you give me cash, then that's saying to me, I trust that you're going to make the best decision about what you need. And so what you need right now might be a beer, or it might be something like tampons, right? But I'm going to trust that you individual um, can make the best choice. And so I think uh, socially we have this need to know what's happening with our contributions. It's why we have things like sponsor children, right? But I think there is real value in saying, yep, I just recognize that you're another human in need. And so here's maybe a way to help you meet that need. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of discretion involved. I would say I personally do all of those things. I sometimes give cash, I sometimes give bus tickets, I sometimes just say hi. Um, so I don't think there is a right answer, um, but I think, I think the act of thinking about it and the act of exercising the simple kindness of greeting someone um, is the, the best place to start.